to the crisis we face right now. President Obama has already faced a lot of controversy regarding some of his decisions, especially when it comes to the economy. One of the major challenges was the AIG bond scandal. Enough is enough! After this happened, some people were doubtful, but some were hopeful, while others still felt upset and deceived. I, mean, I think it was difficult. I think he's trying his best. Um, I think that he's going to learn very quickly that giving more money to these institutions is going to do no good, because they're going to do what they've been doing with it, which is not loaning it out and giving it to their executives to take jets and to go on vacations, which is ridiculous in this economy. Obama administration essentially has continuity with the Bush administration. Uh, Geithner was in uh, the New York Fed um, before Obama took over, and now he's head of the Fed. I really don't see any change whatsoever. I mean, Obama, is, uh, he's running a different game with, uh, with the stimulus plan as opposed to just the bank bailouts, but he's still doing the bailouts. But despite the troubles, many Americans maintain a consensus of hope and still believe in President Obama's message of change and a better future for all. I think he's done well. Uh, he's definitely been bold and taken on a lot of challenges, and he's actually put forth the effort to get uh, other Republicans and people into the process of discussing this and come up with a plan that's effective, that everyone can partake into it. So he didn't just use Democrats, he called on Republicans. And I think he tried to bring all of America, make it a dialogue uh, for people in Washington, D.C., in middle of America, everyone to start talking about this, how we have to be responsible for our money now. I think just if you heard his message about saying that these AIG people need to give their money back or we're going to start taxing you was a great message for our country and it provides a lot of hope to say, you know what, he is on our side. So I think he's doing a great job. Numbers came out this week, guests that uh, indicated that if you add the people who say they like the president and his policies, and the people who say they like the president but don't like his policies, that number's around 80%. A lot of people like this guy, and I'm wondering as a matter of practical politics whether that makes things a lot easier for him, even when he's trying to get Congress and the people to swallow some very tough proposals. Juan Carlos? He's definitely a skillful politician uh, in the light of Ronald Reagan, uh, John Kennedy. And he's putting that into good use for his agenda. Uh, there's no disagreement on that. However, President Bush, uh, George W. Bush, was as popular as President Obama at the same point in his presidency. So we're still uh, 100 days into, into Mr. Obama's first term. Uh, there's still a lot of, of, of months ahead. And the economy, if the economy keeps soaring, uh, well, we'll, we'll see a more discontent growing. And, and let's remember, this is a country of uh, of, uh, with values of limited government, people don't like big government. There is a, a lot of skepticism towards Washington. And we're witnessing the largest expansion of, of government since, since George W. Bush. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I think that uh, eventually, eventually Americans are going to realize that the dangers of, 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 of Mr. Obama's agendas to, to this country's liberty and to this country's economy. Gabriela, uh, during the AIG and uh, bonus controversies, we saw many of the same people who voted for President Obama complaining about, mm, let's say, the class tensions inherent mm. in the way some of this money was being spent. This is correct, um, especially in the labor movement. I think there was great skepticism as to the bailout for AIG. Uh, there was a lot of money. The feeling overall was here we are handing these taxpayer dollars to with without any um, oversight that we could see in a continuation of the Bush policy. And then at the same time, I think there was uh, great skepticism on the other end as well, why aren't we helping out the auto industry where you're actually going to have people losing jobs? And that contributes uh, on a sort of a, a massive scale with regards to other industries that are related to that. And they are being placed under such scrutiny that they have to explain every little action, which is probably a good thing because it's not to say that the automotive industry doesn't need to be re revitalized and revised. Uh, however, um, there seemed to be this juxtaposition, and I think that um, the, the working class was simply saying, you know, maybe we ought to rethink this. 